Hey, welcome to Drug Names Decoded. This is uh, Dr. Guerra, and I will be doing Chapter 5, The Nervous System. We're going to first go through each of the drug classes, and uh, then uh, we'll go on to the drugs. Don't be intimidated by this section. We have about 40 drugs to go over. This section alone takes about a quarter of the semester to go over. The first class of drugs are the sedative hypnotics and you can think of these as sleeping pills. Then we have three classes of antidepressant, the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, or SSRIs, and again we have all caps and then a small s. The tricyclic antidepressants, and that's a little bit different because the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors are named after a neurotransmitter, where tricyclic antidepressants are named after uh, the shape of the chemical molecule. The monoamine oxidase inhibitors, the MAOIs, and again all caps MAOI with a small s. The benzodiazepines, the ADHD medications, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, the schizophrenic drugs or anti-schizophrenia drugs, these are also called antipsychotics, the anti-epileptics or anti-seizure drugs, drugs for Alzheimer's, drugs for Parkinson's, drugs for vertigo and motion sickness, and then drugs for muscle relaxation. The first drug is Zolpidem, and the brand name is Ambien, A-M-B-I-E-N, and this is Zolpidem. And that's a prescription uh, sleeping pill. Diphenhydramine, uh, we saw already in the allergy section, and why is it here again? Well, diphenhydramine is that first generation of antihistamine, which makes a patient very drowsy. And it's useful as a sleep aid, and it's over the counter. But instead of a brand name of Benadryl, you're more likely to see something like Tylenol PM, where you'll have Tylenol, in addition to PM, uh, which would be the diphenhydramine. Next is S. Zopaclone, and that S is simply one side of a chemical structure. Uh, we can't just use the letter S because we would put the two consonants S and Z together to make zopaclone, and then you would lose the S anyway. But S zopaclone is Lunesta, and you can think of Moon or Luna. Temazepam is another one of the sedative hypnotics, and you notice that suffix of zepam, Z-E-P-A-M, and that's a benzodiazepine. Well, why isn't it under the benzodiazepines? If you go back to what the brand name is, Restoril, R-E-S-T-O-R-I-L, you can see it's clearly marketed to help someone rest, but that's temazepam. The next drug is Remelteon, and this is Rosarum, and you see that R-E-M for REM sleep. This is Remelteon. And the last one of these sedative hypnotics is Secobarbital. You see that suffix of barbital? Phenobarbital is another example. And this can be used as a sedative hypnotic, but it really hasn't been used that way for a very long time. Really, the 50s are when these started to fall out of favor in place of the in favor of the benzodiazepines, which are much safer. But uh, the brand name for this is Seconal, and this is Secobarbital. The next drug is Citalopram, and this is Celexa. This is the first of the antidepressants, and this specifically is an SSRI, or Selective Serotonin Reuptake Inhibitor. So Celexa is Citalopram. Then we have Paxil, which is paroxetine. And you might think that that atine or the exatine uh, might be something that really gives us a clue to what it's for, but uh, it's not actually very helpful uh, in terms of uh, identifying this as an SSRI antidepressant. Uh, you will see fluoxetine and peroxetine uh, that are the same, but then we go on to citalopram and sertraline and it really doesn't fit into anything. Uh, but this is Paxil, P-A-X-I-L, 
an SSRI. The next drug is fluoxetine, probably the most famous of them because it was the first to come out. And this is Prozac, P-R-O-Z-A-C, or fluoxetine. Next one is sertraline, S-E-R-T-R-A-L-I-N-E, -E, which is Zoloft, Z-O-L-O-F-T, or sertraline, another SSRI. And that ends the group of SSRIs. Uh, the next drug is amitriptyline, and this falls under a different category called the tricyclic antidepressants, uh, so named because there are not three circles, but three cyclic structures in chemistry, so they look something like a circle, uh, but they're not quite. They're actually uh, more like a hexagon or something like that. But amitriptyline, you can be pretty confident when you see that triptyline uh, that you have a tricyclic antidepressant, and this is Elavil, E-L-A-V-I-L, -L, something that can elevate your mood. The next group of drugs are the monoamine oxidase inhibitors, uh, generally reserved for those patients that uh, failed on an SSRI or on a tricyclic antidepressant. And we have phenylzine, which is Nardil, tranylcypromine, which is Parnate, isocarboxazid, which is Marplan, and those round out the three monoamine oxidase inhibitors. The next drug is the first of uh, the benzodiazepines, and although temazepam that we had before is a benzodiazepine, that's really uh, marketed for sleep. Uh, lorazepam is Ativan, A-T-I-V-A-N, it's lorazepam, and the first of the benzodiazepines. And we can see that Z-E-P-A-M uh, suffix, and that's pretty indicative that we have some kind of benzodiazepine. Then we go to clonazepam, and we see again that same suffix, Z-E-P-A-M, and we probably have something uh, that's a benzodiazepine, and that's clonopin or clonazepam. The next drug is diazepam, and that's probably the most familiar, which is Valium, V-A-L-I-U-M. This is diazepam. And then we see alprazolam. And I don't usually hear it as alprazolam, but that sounds correct uh, as well. And this is Xanax, X-A-N-A-X, Alprazolam. And that rounds out the uh, four benzodiazepines. The next couple of drugs are ADHD medications. Uh, the first one is methylphenidate. And uh, this has a number of brand names. Uh, I just put Concerta as one of the ones in the book. But methylphenidate. The next one is dexmethylphenidate, and this is one of those drugs where we see the root doesn't change, but the prefix does. So the dex means that it has a little bit different uh, effect, so maybe if the methylphenidate is not effective, dexmethylphenidate uh, might be. And dexmethylphenidate is focalin. The next drug is atamoxetine, and this looks like it might be one of those SSRIs because peroxetine and uh, the other one fluoxetine uh, both have uh, this ending but atomoxetine actually is a non-stimulant medication used for ADHD and that's Stratera S-T-R-A-T-T-E-R-A -T -T -E that's atomoxetine The next drug is hardly a drug at all. It's actually uh, just uh, it's actually just a salt, uh, really. Uh, lithium, 
and uh, this is used for uh, schizophrenia. That's lithium. There are brand names like lithobid, uh, but I didn't put any brand names in the book. Uh, lithobid, B-I-D, just means you take it twice a day. Aripiprazole probably has the most uh, confusing suffix of them all because prazole is usually used with a GI drug known as a proton pump inhibitor. But aripiprazole is a um, drug that can be used for schizophrenia and the brand name is Abilify, A-B-I-L-I-F-Y. The next drug is Haloperidol. It's a first generation or typical antipsychotic and uh, this is Haldol, H-A-L-D-O-L, and this is Haloperidol. And there are large differences between uh, the first generation and second generation uh, antipsychotics. And we'll go over those in class. Uh, risperidone is one of those uh, second generation or atypical antipsychotics. And this is Risperdol. This is Risperidone. And that rounds out the uh, antipsychotics. The next drug is Depakote. Uh, which is has a generic name of divalproex, and that's Depakote, D-E-P-A-K-O-T-E. -E. Then another anti-epileptic is Dilantin, which is uh, has a generic name of Phenytoin, and that's D-I-L-A-N-T-I-N. -I the next anti-epileptic is Levetiracetum, Again, that's levetiracetum, and that's Keppra. The next anti-epileptic is Lamotrigine. That's Lamotrigine. And that's Lamictal, is the brand name, L-A-M-I-C-T-A-L. Then Pregabalin, which is Lyrica. That's L-Y-R-I-C-A. That's pregabalin. The next drug is gabapentin. Gabapentin, which is neurontin. And you see that GABA is in both of those. And GABA is very important is a very important neurotransmitter, and uh, these drugs uh, affect them. But gabapentin is neurontin. N e u r o n t i n. The next drug is carbamazepine. That's Tegretol. It's carbamazepine. T-E-G-R-E-T-O-L is the brand name. Topiramate. Topiramate. Okay. That's Topamax. T-O-P-A-M-A-X. and oxycarba oxycarbazepine, uh, it's a difficult one, which is trileptal. Oxycarbazepine is T-R-I-L-E-P-T-A-L is the brand name. And that ends uh, the group of anti-epileptics that I'll be going over in class. Uh, the next drug is for Alzheimer's. Uh, this is Aricept is the brand name, A-R-I-C-E-P-T. That's Denepazil. D-O-N-E-P-E-Z-I-L is the generic. Denepazil is Aricept. The next drug combination is for Parkinson's disease. This is Levodopa Carbidopa. And it's two drugs that work together. And one drug actually does all the work, the Levodopa. But carbidopa makes it more effective, and we go over the mechanism of that in class. But levodopa, carbidopa is something called Cinemet, S-I-N-E-M-E-T is the brand name. Another drug for Parkinson is Selegiline, Selegiline, and that's Eldapril.
The next drug, also for Parkinson's, is Premipexol, Premipexol, and that's Mirapex, M-I-R-A-P-E-X, and that ends uh, the drugs for uh, Parkinson's that we'll go over. Next drug for vertigo or motion sickness is Antivert, Antivertigo is what the brand name is, A-N-T-I-V-E-R-T, -E and that's Meclizine. The next drug is scopolamine. And scopolamine is transderm scope. It's a little patch that you put on if you're going on a cruise or something like that and you're worried about getting motion sickness. Then we have a couple of drugs for muscle relaxation. The first one is dantrolene, which is dantrium, D-A-N-T-R-I-U-M which is dantrolene. And the last one is baclofen, which is Lioracel, L-I-O-R-E-S-A-L, which is baclofen, a drug for muscle relaxation uh, for spasticity.